All right, this one is from Katie. She didn't want me to say her last name, so I'm gonna respect that. Holy killer takeoff. Hajime! Welcome back to New Pole Vault Vlog. This is the vlog where we do all things that are all about Pole Vault. It's a new vlog with the same old stuff that we used to do all the time. We talk Pole Vault news, Pole Vault events, Pole Vault gear, Pole Vault babies, Pole Vault masters, Pole Vault training, Pole Vault meets, and most importantly, how stupid box collars are. <laughs> They're stupid. This is also the time where I answer all your pole vault questions you leave in the comments below. There's also a little segment where I will review some videos, a couple every week, just so you guys can know how I coach and train, and that I can help a couple people along the way. It's been a while, let's do some pole vault news. If you've been living under a rock lately, the Olympics just happened. Renault Lavalalin... A lot of L's in that man's name. Brrr. Broke the Olympic record again! And held it for about 7 seconds. It's because De Silva came and broke the Olympic record also and won the gold medal in a nail biter. Little fun fact, De Silva's coach, Vitaly Petrov, is Bubka's old coach. This just in, the Petrov Bubka model is now just going to be shortened to De Silva model. What kind of model are you doing? The silver model. <laughs> That's stupid. Renault was really sad, not because he lost his Olympic record and the gold medal, but because Brazilian fans were acting like a bunch of. <laughs> you know who's not? <laughs> Sam Kendricks, who stopped a practice pole vault run to stand for the national anthem. The video went viral, and yeah, attention for the pole vault. America. Jen Sher, the 2011. 2000. Let's try this one more time. 2012 Olympic champion Jen Sher placed seventh, even while being deathly ill. Reports claim that she got sick because someone told her she was gonna have to jump with a box collar. Box collars are stupid. And the great Sandy Morris places second, wins the silver medal at the Olympics on a heartbreak of a third attempt for gold. But she said, that, I'm just gonna jump five meters a few weeks later and becoming the third person ever to jump that bar. Okay, so last week I said if you guys sent me some videos, I would review them on the vlog and kind of give my two cents and we'll go from there. I'm really, really, really nervous about this because there are a million ways to pole vault. Half of you are gonna agree with me, half of you aren't, and then the other half isn't gonna give a sh And that doesn't make any sense because there's no such thing as three half shots. So come on, you're smarter than that. So keep in mind while you watch this, I'm not telling you you're vaulting right or wrong, I'm just presenting opportunities and suggestions. Like, hey, if you don't know what else to try, here's an idea, try this. If it works, great. If it doesn't, eh, throw it away, try something else. I'm just presenting opportunities to try something new. So do not get mad at me and start a political pole vault revolution in the comments. Plus, these kids would not like that anyways. So they're just trying to get a little bit of help and maybe different feedback. So keep that in mind. All right, let's start with this one. This is from Glenn Clovis. Her name is Sarah and she, they were saying she's having trouble getting upside down. It's a pretty nice looking jump. I like it. Okay, if you know anything about me, I always, I like to think about the order of operations. What happens first? So when I look at this, I always go, all right, plant looks pretty good. She's getting rocked just a little bit there. So her hips are in front of her shoulders. So if your hips are in front of your shoulders, you're losing energy in the swing. So that could be a correction first. If she can press up with that left arm just a little bit and keep those hips back a little longer, it'll create that stretch reflex in your chest, creating more energy, and then your swing will be more aggressive going up. That doesn't work for all vaulters. What I find works most of the time with the swing has to do right here. So if you look, 
her hands are on her shins. So if your hands are on your shins, your hips are gonna be low. But what would happen if you put your quads on your hands or your hands on your quads? There's two ways of looking at it. And her hips are already gonna be up. You kind of skip this middle step. So think about putting your hands on your quads or your quads on your hands. And let me know how that goes. Most kids are strong enough to get inverted. It's usually a technique type of thing. All right, thanks for sending that. That was awesome. I love your little jump. And you're gonna jump really high. <laughs> you're like on the verge of going nuts. All right, let's do the next one. All right, this one is from Katie. She didn't want me to say her last name, so I'm gonna respect that. Holy killer takeoff. I wanna just see that again. Boom! Ah, that's awesome. So the same type of thing we're having here is if she can keep pushing up a little bit higher with that bottom hand. Like, if you think about planning with your left hand right about here, then this arm's gonna be pushing up a lot higher on the pole and the pole and the bend's gonna start working up a little bit higher. So if we watch it, but yeah, the bend's kinda down here a little bit. So we wanna get that up a little higher. So if she can push up there, it's gonna change the way the pole bends. She's gonna be on bigger poles and she's gonna just keep pushing both hands up towards the crossbar. And then that's gonna improve your jump big time. But look, just like the last jump we were talking about, Hands right on the quads, close to it. Hips are high, boom. It's awesome little jump, I love it. So good. Thanks for sending that. I hope that works. I, I sent you a longer email, but this is kind of the shorter version. Let me know what you think. Keep me posted on the updates. I like updates. All right, last but not least. Whoo, that looked fun. Let's watch that again. Looks real fun kind of a funky angle, but let's see if we can see it. So I always go, when does the pole make contact with the back of the box and what's your top arm doing? So we can see like right here, arms bent. It makes, it makes it jump really hard after the pole hits the back of the box. So what I always try and do and teach my vaulters is we want that top arm to be completely locked. Like I, I always joke that I hate your elbow. I don't want to see any bend in that elbow. I want that thing to be locked before the pole touches the back of the box, be slightly in front of your head. So the pole's starting to bend, so it'll touch the back of the box and the elbow's still bent. Still bent, pole's bent, still bent, pole's bent. The elbow almost always goes straight, unless you're on a really small pole. Yeah, so that arm never locked. So then we're losing energy. Then your arm becomes like a shock. And if you think about it, you don't want your arm to be a shock. You don't want slack in the rope. You can't pull a wagon if there's slack in the rope. You can only pull the slack in the rope. So that arm has to be locked for you to get all the energy out of it you can. That's awesome. You're doing a lot of things right. That's a fun little jump you got there. I can't wait to see what happens when you just lock that arm at takeoff and plan a little bit in front of your head. The second half, you got such a killer swing. Wow. Putting a lot of energy in that pole. So, man, try that. Let me know how it goes. Lock that top arm, plant a little bit in front of your head. I hope that was a little helpful for you. If it was, great. If you guys want your videos reviewed, send them to sean.francis19 at gmail.com and uh, in the header, just put pole vault review. You'll, you'll start to see that the way I coach is pretty much the same for everybody. So if you can kind of see how I'm helping other people, you can start to look for those things in your own vault. And on top of that, always keep in mind that it's not better to have more coaches. Like, think of, think of having too much ingredients in your soup. If you put too much crap in your soup, all of a sudden your soup starts to taste really crappy. Same is true for having too many coaches. So just because you don't understand something your coach is saying, don't think someone else is gonna be a better coach. There's a lot of ways to make soup, <laughs> all right? Um, my way of soup might not mix with somebody else's. So always keep that in mind. And it's always better to have someone, a cook who's there all the time. And your cook is your coach. But if I can help, I'll try my best. But just be be mindful of that. Last few things before I leave. I got invited to Doctoberfest. I will leave a link in the description below. I'm gonna make a, a couple vlogs about it and then make a video for um, Doc. That, that is coming October 1st, really quick. So if you wanna hang out, be in a vlog, Doctoberfest. Also, Apex Pole Vaulting started doing a podcast. Podcasts have been around for a little while, but there just really hasn't been a good pole vault one. And 
finally Apex is doing it. They have elite coaches, they're gonna have elite athletes, they're gonna have all sorts of everything pole vault. So if you like pole vault, pole vault podcast, it's really good. I will also put a link in the description where my pants are right now. That's about it. If you haven't subscribed, there's like a little owl right here. If you just tickle his belly button with the pointer finger of your mouse, that makes everything way better. Let me know what you think about these new pole vault vlogs. I will try and make one every week. Life's meant to be experienced and curiosity will get you there. See you guys next time. Watch my other vlogs. They're really good too. Okay, bye. You will, you will, you will find a unicorn. A, un, a, a unicorn will come to you and he will give you his horn that you can make wishes. Do unicorns die if they lose their horn? Then they'd just be a corn. <laughs> unicorn. One corn. Why is it called a corn? A unicorn would be like corn on the cob, but just one of them. And what's a dosa corn? Is that like a goat? <laughs>